Dr. Hidalgo, thank you so much for joining us today to speak about your presentations at AACR. Um, so you were the first co-author of a poster on the HOPE trial, uh, which examined organoid sensitivity in pancreatic cancer. So my first question for you is, what is the rationale for generating these patient-derived organoids, and are PDOs being used in this space in general? Yeah, PDOs is a very common tool these days. Uh, they've been generated by different methodologies from many a subset of uh, patients and diseases. We have been interested in pancreatic cancer and the particular goal of the HOPE trial is to use the uh, PDOs, the organoids, to, to predict a treatment response. So we want to develop organoids as a tool to do that. And in this first uh, trial, we basically uh, correlated um, response of patients to a standard of care with the response of the organoid to the same standard of care classified patients as responders and non-responders and try to correlate that with a response in the organoid. And you know, in the subset of patients that we were able to achieve uh, the organoid and test it, the correlation seems to be quite um, positive and that has been reported by, by other groups as well. So we think that the correlation is there. Now we need to sort of industrialize the development of the organoid and standardize uh, and get it to sort of to be a clinically applicable tool. That'll be part of a subsequent clinical trial. And then do you think you could speak a little bit about how PDOs are just used in this space in general? In, uh, well, it's being used for, for many, many um, uh, different uh, uh, strategies. One is to just test drugs. And, and prioritize which drugs would be, you know, more uh, effective in a particular disease. So it's a good screening tool for drugs. We're more interested in the precision medicine angle and the building collections of organoids, testing the organoids against different drugs and either uh, and correlate and use that information to treat patients. It's also a tool for biomarker development. You can learn as you analyze very deep the organoid uh, with regards to, you know, to um, genomics and epigenetics and proteomics, and then you determine which drugs the organoid is susceptible or resistant to, you can get information as to potential biomarkers. Perfect. So you did um, kind of touch upon this a little bit, but I figured maybe you could expand upon this. Um, could you speak to the goal of the HOPE trial and then what inspired this research? The research was inspired just yes, by the, our interest in developing the approaches that will help patients. And the goal of this trial was, uh, this was a pilot feasibility study. We wanted to test, A, can we do this? Can we do this in real time? Is it feasible? Uh, which kind of biopsies we need to get, and is there a you know, correlation strong enough that we can build a hypothesis on it and then design a second trial, HOPE 2, that will more formally test the hypothesis. And I think we got there. We got what we needed. That's very exciting. Yeah. So do you think you could walk me a bit further through the methods that were used in this study? Yeah. So you take a biopsy, or a, uh, which can be either a needle biopsy or a surgical specimen. Uh, you take it in the operating room or, or in the biopsy suite. You take that specimen to the lab. You disgregate cells, and then you plate the cells in the material and organoid uh, containing media. Then what we do is we give different passages of the of the media so that we develop. Uh, that the organoid takes, they need to take in, in, in the plate, grow, and then when we have enough material, we can start testing drugs and measuring cell death, basically. And then what were the preliminary findings presented at AACR, and then were any of them particularly surprising? Well, what's surprising, um, the, what we learned is that it's not that 
easy to get the organoids up and running in real clinical time. So we miss a lot of patients because either the biopsies were not big enough, because we didn't process those biopsies rapidly, because we didn't play them correctly. So it's been a learning exercise on one end. The positive side is that when a drug works nicely in the organoid, and we went back and looked at the patient who had been treated with that drug, the correlation is pretty good. So were there any challenges in using this approach? Challenges to get all the logistics together. How about, um, what, is this approach financially feasible? Well, you know, if we can uh, personalize drugs for patients and avoid utilizing drugs that are not useful, it will be. Because you spend on one side, but you're saving a lot on the other side. Drugs that don't work, create toxicities, admissions, problems secondary to the, to the toxicities. That all is very helpful. And do you see this being used more often as a way to personalize medicine? Totally. I think it's going to be a very intense area of research by many groups. And papers are coming out constantly on that topic. That's very exciting. And speaking of these papers, um, are there any future trials that you wanted to highlight um, that were planned on examining PDOs further? Yeah, we're gonna we're designing now Hope Two, which will be a proper phase to trial to start testing whether or not it really works. And then, what would you say is the key takeaway from this poster that you want your colleagues to know? That tumors like pancreas cancer that are genetically very desertic in the sense that we don't find actionable mutations. Looking at phenotypic screening um, can be another way to personalize treatment. So moving on to your other presentation that you had at AACR. So you were the first author of a phase 1b study of palbocyclib plus nabpaclitaxel in patients with metastatic adenocarcinoma of the pancreas. So could you speak to the rationale of this research first? There's been a, a number of papers, some of them published by us, uh, showing that uh, CDK4-6 inhibitors may play a role in pancreas cancer. We thought that initially the hypothesis is that because those tumors often have deletions or mutations in, P in P16, and therefore uh, they, they have a, a sort of a, uh, uh, activation of CDK4-6 for that reason, that palbocyclic could be sort of a chemical P16 and will block that and therefore block the cell cycle. And uh, uh, so we developed that preclinically. We, we put it in combination with chemotherapy. We saw in the preclinical studies that the combination with taxanes it was as effective as the combination with gencytabine and taxanes, and therefore we could do a doublet rather than a triplet. And these trials sort of explore different uh, sequences and doses and, and uh, ways to administer, the, to administer these, these um, drugs. Um, you know, the results were, were reasonable, but we didn't meet sort of the pre-specified criteria for survival. That was pretty ambitious, um, but... Um, uh, we didn't meet it, so that regimen as written won't move forward. But we learn a lot in the preclinical studies on different ways to, and we just published a paper on that topic, uh, was published a couple of months ago. I think we'll be, we can, we will come back to redo that in a, in a to redo that in a, in a different, hopefully more effective manner. So do you think you could talk a little bit more about the findings of this study? We found that the combination is tolerable, that the adverse events is within the expected uh, range of events, that uh, there are responses, that the survival is, is good 50% at 12 months, but we wanted 65%, that there are no drug-drug interactions, and that uh, patients with the, um, um, yeah, but basically those are the findings, yeah. Perfect. So did you notice that uh, if there was a difference between those uh, with the CDKN2A, RAS, or TP53 mutations than those without? We have limited information that uh, 
uh, there may be differences in survival in these groups, but this was largely done in cell-free DNA, and we have only a small, a small data set. So um, it's something that, you know, it's still exploratory. So what are some of the questions that you still want to answer regarding this combination? We think that there is a role for uh, combining chemotherapy and CDK4-6 inhibitors in not concomitantly, but sequentially. And we think that if you give chemotherapy first and then CDK followed by CDK4-6, when cells are recovering from the chemotherapy insult, you can get a better response. And then what is your take home message regarding this trial? Take home, home message is that um, we think there is a, a potential here, but we need to do more preclinical work to properly design the next generation of clinical trials. As it is, I won't do a phase three based on this. Okay, it's not there. And then is there any other research being done in pancreatic cancer or beyond um, that will be presented at AACR that you're excited about or wanted to highlight? Yeah, there are, there are, there are a lot of uh, research presented in, in pancreatic cancer, and I'm, I'm not sure I have seen many, many abstracts, but in other, in other diseases, there is a, a large number of very interesting papers, new immunotherapy agents, new targeted agents, new drugs in, for example, exon 20 mutated EGFR lung cancer. We saw new data of combining uh, targeted uh, therapy and immunotherapy in melanoma. We saw uh, different ways of administering the, uh, targeted therapies in mainly BRAF inhibitors in melanoma. So there's been a very, very significant uh, uh, body of, of new data, very exciting. And all that, many of that will be available on the web for, for physicians and researchers to, to look into. That all sounds very exciting. And okay. now, Dr. Hidalgo, my final question for you is, is there any research that you're personally involved in that we didn't discuss right now that you wanted to highlight? Well, we're working in a number of uh, new agents in pancreas cancer. And uh, personally, I've been working intensively in the BL8040, which is a CXCR4 inhibitor. We have uh, some data presented last year, ESMO, and hopefully we'll be presenting and publishing new, year, new data this year, that's one to keep an eye on. Um, been working on, the, as I told you, the CDK46 uh, story will build uh, upon it. We're going to continue developing organoids for personalized treatment and also working with a couple of very interesting compounds. One is from Eritech, it's a, it's a, a, a erythrocyte containing asparaginase that is in phase three and very interesting phase two data. So. We'll see when that study is completed and read. And uh, I'm working very intensively with the Imprecision Promise, which is the PANCAM funded adaptive randomized design for pancreas cancer. I think there are going to be a ton of uh, uh, very interesting clinical data coming from that, from that group. So yeah, uh, busy, exciting times, but uh, hey, we, we need to continue working on it. We haven't made the, the progress we need to make. Well said. Well, that was a perfect way to end this interview. So Dr. Hidalgo, thank you so much for uh, taking the time out of your day to speak with us. Thank you very much. Have a good day. You too. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.